Hi, this is Vince Riley, the internet's least busiest music nerd. After five years since their last CD, much talk of its recording and release of its expected physical versions in June 2016, Radiohead quietly released their ninth studio album for download at half seven on the second Sunday evening of May. As I was surfing the net at around nine and came across the announcement, my response was, Oh, okay, off to the iTunes store. I'd already caught whiff of the first two tracks, Burn the Witch and Daydreaming, and loved them. So what was I to make of the rest? Because you just never know. Bowie's Let's Dance, Burn and Eno's Everything That Happens Will Happen Today, Björk's Volta, David Sylvian's Dead Bees and a Cake, none of them real stinkers, but definitely disappointments. But as everything is relative, these albums sounded so mediocre simply because these artists had already achieved so much better. Radiohead's follow-up to Kid A and Amnesia could only mean the highest expectations, so Hell to the Thief was a relatively safe collection of fairly dull songs. And so my reaction to a moon-shaped pool? Well, I have to tell you, thank fuck it's, it's great. Some reviewers have said that the string arrangements on Burn the Witch reminds them of Johnny Greenwood's film music for Paul Thomas Anderson. That's hardly surprising, as it's him who does both. What's more surprising is to feature this approach to string arrangements on a pop single, if you can call that a pop single. After all, Greenwood's classical influences strongly feature Penderecci and Messiaen, two fairly angular and difficult 20th century composers, and it makes for a very perky opening to the album. In fact, strings feature largely on this CD, in general, broadly due to Greenwood gaining his confidence and reputation in writing orchestral scores, not only for films, but for the classical concert hall. To mention Paul Thomas Anderson again, he's the director of the pop video for Daydreaming. What Radiohead is to music Andersons to film, i.e. thank fuck they're around when there's so much other crap. The song itself is exquisitely written, sung, played, and I feel most importantly here, really wonderfully produced. The piano delicately and intricately accompanied by various tinklings and twinklings. Deck Stark heavily features my one gripe about this album in general, reverb. Much of this CD sounds as though you are listening to it from the other end of the channel tunnel. Call me a cunt, but should reverb be a defining style or just an effect, and as such, used sparingly? I had to put up with U2's top of the mountain shit the first time around. Desert Island Disc is also typical of this album, whereby it's a fairly traditional song, but spiced up with layers of beautifully produced accompaniment that drags it into the 21st century. The opening rhythm of Full Stop is pure noi. If you don't know noi and you pride yourself on groovy music taste, shame on you. Well, actually, they were a long time ago, but very, very important for what you listen to now, I'm sure. Radiohead have been known for years to love 70s Krautwork, particularly Can, and, as we can see here, noi. But I mean this reference positively. It's the same as in visual art. Music lacks depth without a sense of history. I first played full stop when driving on the motorway and thought the horns was a lorry on my ass. Radiohead may be considered innovative, but Glass Eyes is unashamedly pretty music. However, this to me is innovative, as it's not restricting their style to always sound innovative. Alice Clare? As the old fuck I am. My gripe about pop music today in general is you've got to have a fucking tune. Give us a fucking tune. That's the fucking job. Rather than someone swallowing their tongue over a digital egg timer. Do you know what I'm saying? Identikit is, in my view, the low point. The arrangement, production and definitely the guitar are clunky and uninspiring and poor little Tom wanders a vast cavern of reverb. If you feel differently, please explain why in the comments, but I can tell you this. It's not your favourite track, now is it? This also goes for the numbers. 
although I expect this to be much more of a grower. I suspect that Radiohead as a group of intelligent middle-aged musicians listen to a far broader and surprising range of music, particularly world music, than one might expect. And present tense shows a distinct, well, South American bossa nova slant. I suppose it is bossa nova. Perhaps this traditional sound is there to serve the lyrics, the idea that we shouldn't always live and think in the present tense. The next track, Tinker, Tailor, Soldier, Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, Beggar Man, Thief, Tinker, Tailor, Soldier, Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, Beggar Man, Thief. Now, that's what I call a long title. If one were to choose which track to typify this album, it must be this. Masses of reverb on the vocals, lots of strings, layers of accompanying sound, all in the service of a fairly traditional song. Many will remember True Love Waits as also the last track on their one live CD, I Might Be Wrong. Except this time, it is sung over piano instead of guitar and made particularly lovely as a result. So, to sum up, with music you feel what you feel. You like a CD or you don't, I suppose. I'm relieved that after the long anticipation it was worth the wait, and its adventurous style I hope will inspire other young bands to be at least as bold in their own music. One worry for me is that each member of the band will now go back forever to other solo projects and collaborations, and that might be the end of Radiohead in the future. And this would be a great shame, as Radiohead are always or nearly always greater than the sum of its parts. I thank you for listening, value any comments, and a moon-shaped pool? Well, thank fuck.